Now, people who watch this channel know I'm a fan of the Eagles, but I'm also a fan of the idea of just fandom in general. It fascinates me. When you're rooting for a team, the players and coaches are irrelevant. They're not actually from your town. They don't care about your city. They would gladly go somewhere else if they were paid more. So when you're rooting for a team, you're rooting for a fan base, a community of fans. So I thought it was only fair, so you guys go into this Super Bowl knowing both fan bases, that I do a Patriots fans history as well, all right? Patriots fans history. Here we go. A Patriots episode of Fan History, the new YouTube show that is not even mildly successful. So Boston sports has been very successful, the Celtics have done very well, the Bruins have done very well, but as with all East Coast fan bases, the Boston fan base is drawn to misery and depression. They follow the storyline that is most torturous, so that they can torture themselves horribly. You suck, Nova! You suck! The Red Sox started in 1912, and from 1912 to 1918, they were one of the best teams in baseball, up until they traded Babe Ruth, the great Bambino, over to the Yankees in around 1920. We have to I have to check my Wikipedia facts here. Which started an 86 year drought of no World Series right when they traded them. Right? They didn't win another World Series for 86 years. Well to say that I'm not happy about the state of the team right now would be an understatement. This team sucks. It was painful. It was brutal. And then finally, in 2004, they win the World Series. And it's unbelievable. Let's go run! It's fantastic, okay? It was this big release that this city so greatly needed. Now you're wondering, why am I talking about the Red Sox during this Patriots fan history? Where were the Patriots during all this turmoil? Well, the Patriots fans didn't exist. They didn't exist. I can't find anything about Patriots fans before 2001. Tough guy, huh? So, you don't believe me? Back in 1993, the Patriots were rumored to be moving from New England to St. Louis and changing their name to the Stallions. Nobody cared! Can you imagine that happening now? If the Patriots wanted to leave New England to go to St. Louis, people would lose their minds. No one cared! The Boston fans had their hearts filled with the passion for the Red Sox and the Bruins and the Celtics. Even college hockey teams had bigger fan bases than the Patriots. No one cared that they were gonna leave. And then all of a sudden, 2001 comes along. You got Bill Belichick, you got Drew Bledsoe. All of a sudden, Drew Bledsoe gets injured. Tom Brady, the golden boy. All right, Prince Charming comes riding into town and he offers the city of Boston a chance to finally be winners without a hundred years of ups and downs and tortured souls, okay? All of a sudden, he just hands them this winning team that they didn't care about before. They didn't have to go through all that pain like they did with the Red Sox. They are just gifted a winning team. So the Patriots fans are young, they're rich and spoiled with wins and Super Bowls. They're like the Justin Bieber of football teams. I didn't have a football team. But now I do! Let's go! That's why according to Thrillist, the Patriots fans are the most obnoxious fans. They were voted the most obnoxious fans in all of sports. That's the truth. So that's your Super Bowl, guys. The most obnoxious fans versus the drunkest and most unruly. Who will you be rooting for? I know who I'm going with.